In this lesson, we'll take a look at uh, how two planes can intersect or not intersect, exist together in three-dimensional space. And in the example on the first page here, we've got two planes that are parallel. And uh, first of all, pi, the pi is often the symbol used to represent a plane. So we'll call the red one pi one and the blue one pi two. Now the coefficients of x, y, and z, uh, 6, negative 15, negative 3 for the top one, pi 1, that's the uh, components of the normal vector. Remember, a normal vector is um, perpendicular to the plane or orthogonal, if that's the word you want to use. And uh, for the second one, for pi 2, 2, negative 5, negative 1 is a normal vector for that plane. Now notice that these two normal vectors are multiples of one another. In fact, specifically, normal number 1, is 3 times normal number 2. Multiply this by 3, you get that one exactly. And so if those two normal vectors are multiples of one another, that means that those normal vectors are parallel. Now if they're both perpendicular to, these, to each plane, then that means that the two planes have to be parallel. And an exa another example of parallel planes that don't intersect are, for example, the floor and the ceiling of the room you're in. Unless you're in an unusual room, the floor and the ceiling are normally perpendicular. Now, the normals are perpendicular here, but notice that the constants 9 and negative 1 are not in the same multiple as the normals. Um, this normal, if we multiply it by 3, we get this one. But if I multiply negative 1 by 3, I don't get 9. Uh, if that was negative 3, and the normal, the constants were in the same multiples and normals, then they would actually be physically the same plane. They'd be called coincident planes. They would share all common points. But since the constants are not in the same multiple, then the planes are parallel and distinct. They're called uh, distinct means that they do not share any common intersection points whatsoever. There's no point that's on both of the planes. For example, there's no point that's on both the floor and the ceiling of the room you're in unless you're in a really unusual room. Another way that two planes can intersect in three-dimensional space is if the uh, planes are not parallel, then they have to intersect in a line somewhere. So here's the line of intersection. Every point that's on this line is also on both of the planes. Now here's another example of parallel planes. Notice that the normals 2, negative 5, negative 1, and 6, negative 15, negative 3 are, are multiples just like in the previous page. In non-parallel planes, the normals are not multiples of one another. So 2, negative 5, negative 1 is not a multiple of negative 7, 4, negative 5. And so that's an example of, of two planes that would intersect in a line somewhere. Another example of uh, planes that intersect in a line are, for example, a wall and the ceiling in a room, uh, or the wall and a floor. They intersect in a line that's the wall and the floor on the, of course, on the floor where the, the two meet, or the, uh, the top of the wall where it hits the ceiling. That's the line of intersection. So that's all the ways that two planes can intersect in three-dimensional space. Uh, and of course, uh, unless they're exactly the same plane, and I already talked about that on the previous page. So we're going to take a look at um, uh, some examples of how two planes can intersect and, and how we find their intersection points. And of course, um, 3, 2, negative 6 is not a multiple of 2, 3, negative 9. So these two normals are not multiples. So these two planes would have to intersect in a line somewhere. So that's why we're asked to find parametric equations for the line of intersection of these planes. Now I'm going to write the two equations down. I'm going to call the top one number one and the second one number two. And we're going to use the method of elimination to uh, solve this system of equations. And so I'm going to eliminate x here. Uh, the least common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. So I'll multiply the first plane by 2 and the second plane by 3. And if I do that, now I multiply every constant by 2 and every constant by 3. And then that's what the two uh, planes would look like. Notice that I brought the constants over to the right. So negative 5, I have 5 over here. And the 10 became negative 10 on the right side. And that's a, a normal customary thing to do. You don't have to. Uh, that's what I'll, how I'll do this in all these examples. Now the two 6x's are the same, so that means we would subtract. And this is just like in two-dimensional space when you have two equations and two unknowns, often x and y. Uh, we're solving this by elimination, or some people call it addition subtraction. Uh, 
So we're going to subtract 6x minus 6x is nothing. 4y minus 9y is negative 5y. Negative 12z, now when you subtract negative 27z, that's the same as negative 12z plus 27z, which is 15z. And 10 take away negative 30 is the same as 10 plus 30, which is 40. Now notice that everything there is divisible by 5. In fact, we actually can divide it by negative 5 because uh, there's a negative here. In fact, you could always divide by negative 5, I suppose. I divide it by negative 5, so I get a positive coefficient for y here. And then I'm going to solve for y. So I'll just rearrange and bring the 3z to the right. So it'll be negative 8 plus 3z. Now I eliminated at x from both equations. Now you would choose to eliminate a different variable. I'm going to eliminate y. I suppose I could do z, but what you want to do is eliminate uh, two variables and always solve for x or y, whatever they are, in terms of the same other variable. So notice that I solve for y in terms of z here. So when I eliminate y, I'll get x in terms of z. That's the same variable. So um, the least common multiple of 2 and 3 again is 6, but this one, the first equation gets multiplied by 3, and the second one by 2 so that there's a, a 6y here. And so if I multiply the first one by 3, this is what I get. Second one by 2, this is what I get. So I'm eliminating the y's. Notice that the 6y is the same. And of course they're the same, so we would subtract once again. Uh, 9x minus 4x is 5x. Now notice that the uh, z terms are the same. And so when they subtract, they subtract to 0. That won't happen very frequently, but it, it may. It, 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 it did here. So normally we would actually get have an x term and a z term here, uh, but we did in this case. And of course, 15 take away negative 20 is the same as 15 plus 20, which is 35. Dividing out the 5, we get x equals 7. Now, these are actually going to be part of our parametric equations for this line of intersection. So x equals 7. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let z be the parameter t in the parametric equations. So I'm going to put uh, t in place of z, so z equals t, and I'm replacing z with t here, I get y is negative 8 plus 3t. So when you solve for, let's say, x and y both in terms of z, and let z be t, then that actually gives you the parametric equations for the line of intersection. So that's the line of intersection for these two planes. If I were to substitute any number in place of t, I would find points that are on both of the planes.